Thank you so much for joining us online today for this special message from City Center Church, where we exist to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Hey, if God is using these messages to impact your life, would you let us know? You can send an email to mystory@citycenterchurch.com. And hey, if these messages are blessing you, would you consider partnering with us financially? You can do so by jumping on citycenterchurch.com backslash give and you can choose the option that works best for you. It's only your giving that makes it possible for us to continue to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Hey, get your Bibles and your notebooks out and get ready for a life-changing message from the Word of God. Will you open up your Bibles? Tune to, uh, turn to the book of Psalms 42. And while we are turning there, let's pray really fast. Father, I thank you for the Word. I thank you, Father God, that you have given us the word to encourage us and to lead us and to guide us. And this morning, I thank you that you would use me, that you would speak through me. Lord, may I only say what you want said and give everyone ears to hear what your spirit is saying this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I am excited to bring this message to you because it's a message that has encouraged me as I've been writing it and studying it. Because, you know, right now I believe that all of us are going through sadness in some way, shape, or form. All of us are going through hard times right now. Many of us have been confined to our homes for weeks. Many of us have lost loved ones in the last several weeks or are fighting sickness or we're fighting on our knees for a loved one who has been fighting sickness. Some of you have lost jobs and we have been praying for you. And some of you just might be battling discouragement or loneliness because you literally have not touched another person for weeks. And I want you to know this morning that God is with you. And you know, in these moments when we're battling Satan is the cruelest person I know. If you think about the most evil person who's ever walked the face of the planet, Satan was behind every single one of those things that that person did. And Satan doesn't take a sick day. He doesn't take a day off. He doesn't say, you know what? These people have been in quarantine. They've been going through a hard time. I think I'm going to cut them some slack. I think I'm going to give them a break. No, he doesn't do that. He chooses those moments to keep on attacking you and keep on coming after you because he wants to destroy your life. In fact, he's going to amp up his tax attacks on your life right now. He is going to bring doubt. He's going to bring fear. He is going to bring um, self-accusations on you, telling you you could have done it better. You should be doing things this way right now. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. You know, you need to be afraid because you're not going to have money to pay your bills. Your marriage is going to fall apart right now. Your kids, they're going to lose. They're going to lose ground in school, and your better days are not ahead of you. And so the enemy is amping up his tax against you. And when the enemy attacks, I want to tell you today what we're going to study is how to overcome the attack. That is the title of my message, Overcoming an Attack. In Psalms 42 and 43 were both written by David. They were actually, when he wrote them, he wrote them as one continuous psalm. But in our Bible, they divided it up into Psalms 42 and to Psalms 43. And when David wrote this psalm, he was actually running from Absalom, his son, who had created a coup to overtake his throne, overtake the kingdom, and to take over the city. And so David was running. He was running out of the city. It looks like he's losing his family. It looks like like he's losing his kingdom and his throne, his place of service to the people, his place of, of, of serving to God. And David truly feels like he has lost everything in this moment as he is running. And before we go into Psalms 42, I want to show you what the enemy looks like and what the enemy sounds like. There was a guy and his name was um, Shimei. And David was fleeing from Jerusalem out for his life. He was running out of the city with his, with his men with him. And this guy, Shimei, begins hurling threats and accusations at David. And we read in 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 and 8. Shimei says, get out of here, you murderer, you scoundrel. Shimei shouted at David, the Lord is paying you back for all of the bloodshed in Saul's clan. You stole his throne, and now the Lord has given it to your son Absalom. At last, you will taste some of your own medicine, for you are a murderer. Down to verse 13. So David and his men continued down the road, and Shimei kept pace with them on a nearby hillside, cursing and throwing stones at David in the dirt. 
And this is exactly what Satan does to us. It's your fault. You're the bad one. You are not enough. You are a failure. You are worthless. And this is what Satan is always throwing to us, always saying in our ear. And so as David is listening to the word, these words and he's fleeing into the wilderness, he writes Psalms 42. Psalms 42, verse 1. As the deer pants for the water bricks, so pants my soul for you, O God. You know, this is a famous song that they wrote back in the early 80s. I don't remember the guy's name who wrote it, but as the deer pants for water, so my soul longs after thee. And uh, I wouldn't sing it because you would turn off your your internet right now, but it, many of you might remember that song. And when David was writing this, he was under attack. And, you know, I used to read this song or read this verse and, and listen to that song, and I thought, oh, Oh, that's so sweet. You know, as a deer thirsts for, for water, okay, deer get thirsty a lot. And so as they thirst for water and they need water, God, I, I need to thirst after you. But you know what? As I started reading this psalm and I started studying this psalm, I realized that David wrote this psalm when he was fleeing from his enemy. And then I began to think about deer. Now, we live here in a neighborhood, but when we first moved here 10 years ago, our house was the only house here. And so we had deer all over the place. It wasn't uncommon that we could look out our front door and across the street in this open field, there would be eight to 10 deer every night. And we would have deer walk through our backyard right here. And we would actually, we had a, I had a war going on with the deer because they would come and eat my begonias. They would chow down my hosta to the ground, and it was war. I would get out my deer spray, and I would spray every night so that those deers didn't eat my beautiful flowers. So I had this love-hate relationship with the deer. We loved them. We loved to watch them, but I really hated that they ate all of my plants. And so you know what I noticed as I was thinking about this psalm? I never, in all those years that we had deer, like literally walk through our backyard in the middle of the day, never one of them, never one time did I see a deer pant. I, now, my dog, Oliver, um, he pants all the time. <laughs> I mean, I all the time. That dog, whether he's hot, whether he's cold, I mean, he's panting all the time. But never once have I ever seen a deer pant. And do you know why? Because the only time that a deer pants is when he's being chased by an enemy. In fact, when we are being, when the deer are being chased by an enemy, they use up to 80% of their water reserves. And if they are chased long enough they're going to die. And the first thing a deer does after he's gotten away from his predator is he goes to find water. So David wrote this psalm as he's being chased by the enemy, and he's saying, my soul is tired, Lord. My soul is panting the same way a deer pants for water when it's being chased by an enemy. I am panting for you, Lord, and you are the only one who can refresh me. God is the water that you are looking for, church, when you are under attack. And I believe that many of you right now are under attack. And God is the only place that you're going to find refreshment. So today, I want to give you four things to do when you are under attack. Number one, I want you to recognize that you are in a battle. You're not just sad. You're not just discouraged. You are in a spiritual battle. Psalms 42.3 says, My tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me, where is your God? Now, notice the word they in this scripture. Who is they? Who is this elusive they? We need to know who they are. David is about to tell us who they are. Psalms 42, verse 9 and 10. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go on mourning because of the enemy and the oppression? As with the breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say to me all day long, where is your God? And that is exactly what the enemy does to us. David had literal physical enemies chasing after him, and we have spiritual enemies that are chasing after us. And this is exactly what they say. Where is your God? What has God done for you? You have served God, and now your loved one is dead. You have served God faithfully, and you've lost your job. You have served God, and you still have unanswered prayer. Where is your God? And you need to realize this morning that you are in a spiritual battle. Your spouse is not your enemy. Your kids are not your enemy. Your neighbors are not your enemy. Your boss is not your enemy. But Satan, the devil himself, is your enemy. And you are battling against him. And I want to teach you a phrase that I hope you will start to use in this battle against the enemy. And you can find it in Zechariah 3 and Jude verse 9. And the phrase is, the Lord rebuke you. 
call out to Satan and say this to Satan when he is coming against you. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Call him out and remind him who is on your side. When Satan comes in and lies to you and tries to bring discouragement on you and tell you that you've done too much, you've messed up, you've gone too far, it's irreversible for God to be able to turn it around. Look at him and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I am a child of God. How dare you talk to me like that? You don't have the authority to talk to me like that. The Lord rebuke you. You. you have to realize that you are in a battle. You know, I hear people say, I'm just battling depression. I'm just dealing with depression right now. No, you are in a battle. You're not just uh, having feelings of depression. You are in a battle against the spirit of depression. The enemy of your soul is trying to take you out, and he's using the spirit of depression to do it. Let me tell you something else. Satan is so good at producing false evidence for what he is bringing in front of you. He loves to put evidence in front of you to blind you. And the Bible, we find evidence just like this. When Joseph's brother sold him into slavery, he was still alive, but they took his coat and they ripped it up and they soaked it in animal's blood and they handed it to his father. And his father thought, my son must have been mauled by an animal. My son must be dead. It was convincing evidence that his son was dead, but Joseph wasn't dead at all. But yet Jacob believed the lie. He believed the evidence that the enemy put in front of him. And so many of you, the devil has put evidence in front of you. That is not real evidence, but it looks convincing. And today you have to stop believing that evidence. Stop believing the lies of the enemy and realize it's just a tool that the enemy is using because because you're in a battle. Number two, stop listening to yourself. Psalms 42 verse 4. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. Right here, David's starting to whine. He's starting to do what so many of us do. You can almost hear it. For I used to go out with the multitude, and I went with them to the house of God, with voice of praise and joy in the multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. You can hear it. You can hear it just like so many of us do. God, why aren't you answering me? Where have you gone? David is whining and complaining. He's being driven out of the city. He's being driven into the wilderness and into isolation. And you can hear him remembering a better time. And when you're depressed, don't try to cheer yourself up. You need to get around other people to minister to, to you and to bring encouragement to you. And you might say, Jeannie, we are in a quarantine. Where am I supposed to go? I'm in my house all by myself. Honey, get on a Zoom phone call. Phone a friend. Turn on some worship music. Watch one of these hundreds of devos that we're putting out all throughout the week. Find somebody else to bring you encouragement because when you're low, it is really hard, if not impossible, to encourage yourself. You have to attack back. Don't just sit there and let the devil keep pummeling you with his attacks, but start to attack back. You know, this Wednesday, we had some friends of ours who we have, like we talked about on Wednesday night, we had some friends who uh, their dad had been battling um, COVID-19 and um, we found out Wednesday afternoon that Larry's dad had died. And I cried, and I was so sad, and I was so discouraged. And I began to hear the voice of the enemy tell me, your prayers don't work, Jeannie. You are not an effective prayer warrior. God is mad at you. You've done something to block up the channel between you and God. And God is not listening to your prayers. You encourage this, this man's granddaughter to go and lay hands on him because she's a nurse. And how foolish do you look now? You just caused her to realize that God isn't real. Look at what you have done. You should never encourage anybody to stand in faith again. God is not a source of hope. In fact, you are leading a people astray when you you tell them that God is a God of hope and to hope in God. You and God are both frauds. These are all the thoughts that kept pummeling my mind as I found this news out and I was discouraged and I was beaten down and I started doing exactly what David did. God, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? Why have you forgotten me? And let me tell you, Matt and I know what it's like to be in a battle. We have emotions just like you do. We have ups and downs. We have disappointments just like you do. And the enemy comes in like a flood, and he will say whatever is necessary. He will do whatever is necessary to get you off of your God-given destiny. And after I dried my tears, I had to get ready because it was church. It was Wednesday night. We were having church, and I went upstairs to take a shower and to get ready. And honestly, I just wanted to kind of go numb. I kind of just wanted to turn my mind on neutral. You ever been there? We have a TV up in our bathroom, and I thought, I'm just going to turn on some friends. I'm just going to turn on something that's mindless entertainment that I just don't have to listen to this other noise in my head. And you know what? I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, why don't you turn on 
Pastor Robert Morris, why don't you get out the Gateway app and why don't you start listening to a message? And thankfully, church, I surrendered to that voice and I listened to that voice and I found a message and I, I hit play. And as I started listening to the word of God and it started washing over my soul and he was talking about trusting in God and he was talking about that God is faithful. I started feeling like, God, you are faithful. And I was reminded that God is a good God. And I was reminded that, you know what, it's okay that everything doesn't work out the way I do because God's ways are not my ways and his ways are higher than my ways. And I don't have to understand everything. And by the time that message was over, I was shouting in my bathroom. I was praising in my bathroom and God had brought me around full circle to a place of victory and a place of overcoming. And I want to encourage you this morning that when you are in a battle, you need to attack back. Don't just sit there. Don't just sit back on your heels and do nothing, but be on the offense. Be on um, the attack. Um, Stop listening to the lies of the enemy and start to fill your head with the word of God. Number three, start talking to yourself. So we're going to stop listening to ourselves, and we're going to start talking to ourselves. And here's what I mean by this. David said, I pour out my soul within me. Soul is just another word for self, your psyche, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And it's your mind that you're having trouble with right now. It's your feelings that you're having trouble with right now. And when I say stop listening to yourself and start talking to yourself, here's what I mean. Stop listening to your soul and start talking to your soul. Stop listening with the soulish part of you, with your mind and your will and your emotions, and let your spirit start talking to your soul. Psalms 42.5, why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted or not quiet or loud within me? Hope in God, for I will yet praise him, for he he is the help of his countenance. David is talking to his soul, and he is allowing his spirit to rise up and take control. The word cast down in the scripture literally means depressed or to be pushed down. So whenever we get in the car, we depress the gas pedal. We push it down. So if you're depressed this morning, it just means that you are being pushed down. You're being pushed down, and you need to realize who is trying to push you down. The enemy is trying to push you down. David was saying, there is an enemy, and he is trying to push me down. So he starts talking to his soul. And this word disquieted means to roar or to growl. Kind of like a lion starts to roar out in the wild to let everybody know, like, I am in charge. It's Our soul is roaring because it wants to be in control. It wants to be in charge. Another place that David talks to the soul is he talks about a soul being like a baby. In Psalms 131, verse 2, it says, Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul within me. Like a weaned child with his mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. Now, all you moms out there who have weaned children, what happens when we start to wean our child off of milk and put them onto solid food? We take away the bottle. And what normally happens when you take a bottle away from a baby? They cry, they throw a fit, they throw a temper tantrum, they don't like it. And this is exactly what your soul does when it starts, when you start taking charge. Your soul starts throwing a fit. Paul said to the Corinthian church, I should be feeding you solid food by now, but I'm having to still give you milk because they were such soulish people. You see, you have a spirit and you have a soul, and your spirit should rule over your soul. Your soul comes alive at the moment of conception, and you are born, and you have a personality. You have traits and dispositions and ways that you do things, and everybody, you can see that. From a time a child is really young, you can see their personality and their disposition and their soul. And then you get saved. And the Bible says that our spirit, which was dead in trespasses to sin, comes alive when we accept Jesus into our lives. I got saved when I was 15. And my soul had been in charge for 15 years. And I was a selfish person. I was a soulish person because until your spirit comes alive, you are a selfish person because your soul is in control. And when you get saved, then you start letting your spirit lead and guide you. And your spirit says things like, no, we're not going to get mad and cuss at people when they make us angry anymore. Because Jesus doesn't like us to do that. It doesn't glorify him. And so our spirit starts talking to our soul and is in control. And when our soul, being the loving person that they are, when they start hearing that, what does it do? Of course, it gets angry. It resists. It starts roaring back. And your spirit 
City Center Church should rule over your soul. When you are under attack, you need to let your spirit do the talking. And you need to let your spirit say, shut up, soul. We're going to worship God right now. Shut up, soul. We're not going to gripe and complain. We're going to keep our eyes on Jesus. We're going to believe the word of God. We are going to put God first. And we are not going to look at the things of this world. But we're going to keep our eyes on God. And today, many of you need to do exactly that. You need to tell your soul to shut up and let your spirit do the talking. Number four, you need to go to God. When you are under attack, you need to get to God like deer, a deer needs to get to water when they are running from their enemy. Psalms 42 and ver- Psalms 43, like I said, they, are, they were written together and they're divided in our Bible. But we see throughout these two Psalms what David is saying in Psalms 42 verse 5. Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Psalms 42, 11. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. And Psalms 43, 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. When you read these verses, you might think, Jeannie, they're the exact same, but they're not. They're actually very different. Psalms 42.5 says, the help of his countenance. Your countenance is your face. It's what your face looks like. Psalms 42.11 says, the help of my countenance and my God. Psalms 43.5 says, the help of my countenance and my God. Here is what David is saying. When I look at his face, it changes my face. If I'll look at his countenance, it will change my countenance. And I know that many of you are struggling, especially during this time of quarantine and this time of forced isolation. You feel alone. You're battling depression. Your marriage might not be the best right now. You might have lost your job. And I want you to know that we are praying for you. We are diligently as a staff seeking God, that God would flood you with everything that you have need of. But don't let the enemy attack you in this time without attacking back. And the best way to attack is to get in the presence of God. I think the thing I love the most about this psalm is what I'm about to share with you. You know, David, when he was most, what he was most sad about when he was writing this psalm, he said, I used to go with the multitude into the house of God. And David is being driven out of Jerusalem into the wilderness, into the hills to escape his son Absalom. And he's losing his throne. He's losing his family. But do you know what he's most sad about? He's most sad about leaving the church, about not being able to go and to worship God with his family and with his friends. David was going into a period of isolation. And just like us, we are in this period of isolation. He's so sad because he wasn't going to get to go to church with his family and worship God. And you know what? I know that we all feel that same way. We miss gathering together. We miss seeing your face. We miss being together at church and worshiping in one giant room and, and feeling that amazing power of God fall. But let me tell you something. David is sad, but then all of a sudden he remembers something. You don't have to be in church to enter into the presence of God. Here is a guy who wrote the large portion of the book of Psalms. He was the forerunner in personal worship. He was such a great worshiper. He was so great at playing his harp as a shepherd out in the middle of a field that they called him and they said, hey, worshiper, hey, harp player, will you come into the king's presence because he's going crazy. He has an evil spirit and your worship will drive out that evil spirit. That's how great David was at personal worship and time with God. And he's leaving the city and he's grieving over the fact that he's not going to get to go in the presence of God. And somewhere between the Psalm 42 and Psalm 43, David has a revelation that I don't have to be in church to worship God and experience God's presence. And I think he was running out of that city. I think he looked at one of his guys and said, bring my harp because I am going to get in the presence of God no matter where I'm at, no matter where, whether I am alone or whether I'm in the house of God, I am going to get in the presence of God. And can I encourage you today that God is right there in your living room. He is right there wherever you're watching this from. God is with you and his presence presence can consume you no matter what you're facing, no matter if you're alone or with your kids or um, or how many people are there with you. God's presence is there and wants to flood your life. You know, a few years ago, I was driving in my car and I was really upset about some situations that were going on in my life. And I started 
praying, and I say praying, I really mean I was griping. I was like, God, why aren't you doing this? And why couldn't you do this better? And if it were me, I would be doing X, Y, Z. And all of a sudden, I just felt like the Lord was like, Jeannie, just worship. You don't come into my courts with griping. You come into my courts with praise. And you enter my gates with thanksgiving. And so I turned on the radio. I turned on some praise music. And I started singing. And I didn't feel it, y'all. I wasn't feeling faith. I wasn't feeling like I wanted to worship. But I just kept singing. And all of a sudden, I was by myself on the highway in my car. The Spirit of God came into my car. And I was so overwhelmed by the presence of God. I literally almost had to pull my, my car over to the side of the road because I was crying so heavily because God's presence had just consumed me and overwhelmed me. And all of a sudden, I wasn't mad anymore, and I wasn't overwhelmed anymore because when God's presence come in, that's where liberty is. That's where peace is. That's where joy is. And I knew that all those things that I was so upset about, that God was going to deal with them, and he was going to deal with them in his timing and in his way. And I didn't have to worry about that. I just needed to cast the weight of it, cast the burden of it on him. And I want to encourage you this morning, whatever you're battling, whatever you're going through, to just cast all of those burdens and don't allow the attacks of the enemy to weigh you down. God wants to flood your home with his presence today. He wants to help you overcome every attack that the enemy is bringing against you. When you're under attack, you had better get to water. And your water is this. It is the word of God. Get in the word of God. Get in the, in the presence of God. Start worshiping God and allowing him to flood your life and help you to overcome the battles of the enemy that he's bringing against you. Will you just bow your heads this morning? Father God, I thank you. I thank you that we don't have to be in this battle alone. But I thank you, Father God, that your presence is always with us. And I thank you, Lord, and I praise you that, Lord, as this message has gone out, that, Lord, people are going to start to attack back. You're going to give them the ability, Father God. Lord, you're going to help them and fill them with the strength that they need, Father, to overcome and win against every attack of the enemy in Jesus' name. I want you to ask yourself this morning, what is God speaking to me? What is God showing me? What does God want to do in my life? And I want to ask this morning if there's any of you who might not know the Lord. You might have stumbled on our website. You might have stumbled on this Facebook page and you don't know Jesus. And you know what? You've been under attack yourself, but you haven't had a source of water to run to. Well, can I tell you right now that it's really easy to invite the Lord into your life and let him come in and refresh you and give you a place of rest that you might not ever have known before. So if you want to accept Jesus into your life this morning, will you just pray this very simple prayer after me? Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for giving me for forgiving me of all of my sins. Thank you for giving me a new life in Christ and filling me with your spirit. Help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we believe that you just got born again and you are now a part of the family of God. Welcome to the family of God. We are so proud of you and we want to do life with you and we want to encourage you. We want to send you a Bible. So would you please text the word NEXT N-E-X-T to 913-701-3889 so that we can follow up with you, so that we can encourage you, send you some discipleship material and help you in your new walk with the Lord. Church, we love you. We love you so much. And I know that this feels like eternity, but it's not. This is going to be over. This season is going to end. And we're going to come back together stronger than ever before because we will have overcome the attacks of the enemy. We are praying for you. You are not alone. We are fighting with you in the spirit. And we love you so much. Have a great and awesome week.